Okay, welcome back. My name is Professor Don Patterson, working through a series of tutorials here on setting up ReverseEye as a web application. What we're going to do in this segment of code is we're going to make socket.io connect between our client and server. So we're going to do a basic setup of socket.io. That consists of a handful of different parts. Um, the parts look like this. On the server side, meaning in our server.js code, we're going to need to install socket.io. So that's a little bit of work on the command line and then a little bit of work in the code itself. Then we're going to need to add some code to set up logging of connections and disconnections so we can tell when clients are connecting and disconnecting. Then on the client side, in lobby.html and main.js, we're going to need to do some changes. We'll need to install socket.io in the lobby.html code, and we will need to establish a connection from the client to the server in main.js. All right, so let's get going. Let's give that a shot. What I'd like to do is start with installing socket.io. To do this, you're going to need to work from the command line in order to install this. So let me um, let me find a terminal window for myself. All right, I'm going to bring this down, and I'm going to change into my directory where I have my code. All right, so cd, get there and see what files I've got. These are the files that I have um, established. Try that again. These are the files that are here um, as we get started. Now, um, this is the high level. It's not, this is one directory up. Uh, the contents that we're serving, a lot of the content that we're serving is in the public directory. So we can see what's stored in the public directory that we serve through our web server, our HTML, our JavaScript, our assets. What we need to do is we need to adjust what our server, however, is able to uh, work with. And we need to add a library to our server. So to do that, we're going to do the npm command on the command line, making sure that you're in the directory where your files are stored. You want to be in the directory where package.json is. And the command is npm install socket.io dash dash save. Uh, that's going to install the socket.io library for the server side components. You'll see a little bit of downloading, something like that. And um, then if everything goes OK, then if you look at package.json, you should see down at the bottom here, you've got socket.io as a dependency. So that's what we're going to, that's what we want to see. All right, so that um, installs the code, or, or installs the library for our server. And now what we want to do is we want to set up our server so that we can see connections and disconnections. So for that, let's go to um, Visual Studio Code. And let's go into our server.js file. Where is server.js? There it is. So this is the code that runs on our server side. It's uh, it, Right now, all we have is um, some code that's setting up to serve static files, so to serve files from our, um, from our public directory. We have um, a couple components here. We're um, setting up our web server. We get all the way down here to where our web server is running. So what we want to do is we want to add a little. We want to add some code after this. Let me make some space here, and we'll put a comment here. Um, I'm going to copy the comment from the top, and I'm going to paste it down here. And instead of setting up the static file server, what we're going to indicate here is that we are setting up the web socket server. So these are going to be the real-time connections at socket.io uses. Now this code is a little bit tricky, but we're going to set it up so that we can um, work with it uh, for the rest of the rest of the um, coding exercise here. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to um, set up the connection. So we're going to use constant curly bracket capital R S server curly bracket and we're going to set that equal to require require and then double quotes socket.io. That'll that'll bring the library into our JavaScript. Next thing that we want to do is we want to um, set up a server to listen for incoming connections. So we're going to create a constant called IO, which is going to hold that connection. And that's going to be a new server. And we're going to give it our web app that we've made up above. So that's going to, that establishes a server. That's all we need in order to receive connections from clients. But now we need to do something when our clients connect to us. So we're going to set up a whole recipes, a whole set of recipes for what we do when our client sends us messages. So when a client connects, that's how we're going to start. So io.on single quote connection, uh, single quote. We're going to set up a really, really long function here that's going to take the socket 
connection, put it in curly brackets, and equal and a greater than, uh, then a curly bracket, and this curly bracket bit is going to extend for quite a long ways here. We're going to create a function that's going to help us out here. So this is a function that will, um, the, the goal of this function is to output a lot, we're going to put a comment here, output a log message on the server and send it to the clients. So that if we have some kind of message that's going on on our server, we can get that information to our clients so that they can output it in their developer tools. So let's call it uh, function server log. And we're going to pass in dot, dot, dot messages. So this is an array of messages that are coming in. Server capital L log function. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to send out to all of our clients by io.emit single quote log single quote comma single quote square bracket uh, sorry too many single quotes um, comma square bra square bracket single quote one two three four asterisks this is just formatting and then we're going to indicate to our client message from the server colon and then a backslash n single quote square bracket paren and semicolon so that will send out a message to all of our clients, all of our browsers saying, hey, we've got a message that we're about to send you. Now let's go through each of them. Messages dot for each with a capital E. And on each item, what we're going to do is we are going to um, do a little bit of work. The first thing that we're going to do is we are going to send to all of our clients the message that was just passed in. All right, so this is a little bit of tricky syntax. io dot emit paren single quote, log paren, comma, square bracket, single quote, one, two, three, four asterisks, a backslash, a T, single quote, plus item. So that's, and then square bracket and paren, close paren. That's just a little bit of formatting so that it looks okay when, when it gets to the um, client. Then we're also going to output the exact same message in the terminal window where the client, where the server is running. So console.log item. All right, and that's all we've got for our server log. So that's not going to do anything. That's just something that's helpful to us. So now what happens is immediately after a client connects to us, we are going to announce that that has happened. So we're going to call our server log function, and we're just going to say in single quotes, a page connected to the server colon space single quote plus socket dot ID. And that'll just be an indication that um, there a connection was made to the server. Now we're going to add another event so that when a client disconnects, we will announce that as well. So the way we respond to that event is we say socket dot on and then we do in a single quote the event, which is disconnect, D I S C O N N E C T single quote. And then what are we going to do when that happens? We do Paren, paren, equal sign, greater than, curly brackets, and we're going to we're going to say on the console, um, yeah, on on just the server side, we're going to say a page disconnected from the server. Actually, you know what? Let's just use what we have here. Let's say server log, server log, a page disconnected from the server colon space single quote plus socket dot id and that'll tell us who disconnected from our server i hope that's going to work that's a little bit of a on the fly move all right and let's see so make sure that we've got we'll put a semicolon at the end of that line and make sure that everything looks okay here put a semicolon at the end of that So I'm going to call it at the end of that. Okay, I think that's okay. So what that should do is set up our server so that it is writing out to the console whenever someone connects or whenever someone disconnects. Good. That's the server side. So what we need to tackle now is we need to tackle the client side. Okay, so what we've done is we've set up the server side. We installed socket.io with npm install. We set up loggings of connections and disconnections. Now what we need to do is we need to set up our our client and our browser so that it can actually make those connections. So let's go back to um, 
Uh, let's go back here and let's take a look at lobby.html. And so the first thing we need to do is we need to make it so that we have access to this library. And that means that we need to add another script line so that we have access to it. All right, so to do that, um, let's see. What I want to do is I want to go to socket.io. Let's see if we can. Um... All right, so to find this software, we're going to go to socket.io. We're going to go under resources, and then we're going to go under CDN. When we get to CDN, we're going to find socket.io.min.js. That's the JavaScript library, and we're going to right click on it, and we're going to copy the link address. Then we're going to go to our SRI hash website. We're going to put that resource in here. We're going to hash it. And then we're going to get the library code here. So we'll copy that. And then we'll go back to our lobby.html. And we will put it down at the end after jQuery, but before main.js. All right. That will cause lobby to have access to socket.io. So we'll save that. And now we need to make the connection. So now we have access to that code. Go into main.js. This is the client side code. After we have pulled the username off the uh, IRI and after we have added that to the document object model, we're going to go ahead and um, indicate that we are ready to uh, make that connection. So let me see here. The way we're going to do that is we are going to, on the client side, set up a socket connection by calling the IO function on the client side. And then anytime we receive a log message we from the server, we are just going to log it. Oh, sorry, typo get getting tired fingers. All right, and that's all that's required on client side, if it looks okay. All right, now to make sure everything works okay, let me set up some components here. I'll make a new terminal window. And what I want to do is I want to take that to the um, directory. Oops. And we're going to run my localhost server from here, but we also are going to need some windows so that we can see if it's running okay. All right, so now if the code was typed in correctly, when I run the nodes command on server.js, it'll run cleanly. But if I have a typo or my syntax is wrong, it'll crash and I'll see an indication of what line that error occurred on. All right, it's running clean, great. So now let me... Um, Go ahead and type in the address of my website. And so now my website is being served by my local host. And I'm going to go ahead and choose a display name over here on the left. And I'm going to enter the lobby. Uh, great. And you can see that the web page over here made a connection to my server. And if I come over here and I do Patterson and I connect, then you can see a second connection is made. And these are these ID numbers that are associated with the connections. If I navigate away from that website, you should see, great, that first one disconnected. And then if I navigate away from this one, that should disconnect as well. And so the server's running, but no one is actually connected to it. So that's great. All right, so I think that's what we needed to see here. Uh, what we did is we set up socket.io. We went through the server setup of installing socket.io and setting up the code to log connections and disconnections. And then we set up our client. We installed socket.io by going and getting that SRI hash line for our lobby.html. And then we added the very few lines needed to establish a connection from our client in our browser to our server. All right. Um, I think that's where we want to start. stop for now. Thank you very much for your attention.